Okay, so this is lesson four, the law of conservation of charge. So conservation of charge says charge cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred from one object to another. So when we talk about charge transferring from one object to another, really it's electrons that move between objects. Protons don't move, because if you remember in chemistry, protons are in the nucleus of an atom, and they don't leave the nucleus, they're kind of stuck there. Whereas electrons are actually outside the nucleus, you can strip electrons off of an atom and transfer them from object to object. So here we have two objects, okay, we have a rod and a sphere. Let's look at what's going on before the two touch. So to begin with, the rod has a charge of positive 4 times the elementary charge. And each one of those positives is representing one elementary charge. The sphere has no charge. It's neutral. And the reason it's neutral is every negative is paired up with a positive. So overall, there isn't any charge. So the rod touches the sphere. And as a result, some of the charge is going to transfer. That's what this black arrow right here is showing. Okay, after the two touch together, we have now a rod, and the rod's charge is only positive 2 now, and the sphere's charge is also positive 2. So as you can see, the charge was redistributed, okay, some of the negative charges moved, but what I want you to notice is the total amount of charge in the system is 4, positive 4. So after the two touch together, we have 4 times the elementary charge in the system in total. And before the two touch together, the total charge is also plus four times the elementary charge. So remember, when we use conservation laws, totals do not change. So the total charge before is the same as the total charge after. However, the charge is moving around. So here's some applications of this. So question one, please pause the video and read it, and then we'll solve it. So here's the solution to question one. So the idea is when we have things that are identical, when the two identical objects touch together, the charge will average out. So here's what I mean by that. Sphere A currently has a charge of positive seven. Positive seven times Q. Okay, and we don't know what Q is. Q is a variable here. It's going to be some unknown number of coulombs, but we don't need to know what Q is to solve the question. So sphere A, positive 7Q, and sphere B, negative 3Q. And we're just going to average those numbers together. So we're going to divide by 2 because we have two objects. So positive 7 and negative 3, that makes positive 4Q over 2. Positive 4 over 2 is positive 2q. So the answer here is going to be positive 2q. Let's go back for a second and just make sure that answer is there. Yeah, so b. So the idea is, after you average the charges together, each object now has this final charge. So when you touch sphere A to sphere B, after they have touched, sphere A now has a charge of positive 2q, and sphere B also now has a charge of positive 2q. Here is another one that we're going to try. So again, read the question and then come back once you've read it. Okay, so the best way to solve this one is going to be to create a table. Um, in this table, what I've done is my top row is just listing the starting charges. So the question told me what the charge on each sphere was to begin with. I just write that down at the top. Then all of the rows underneath are going to show what the charge on each sphere is after the steps are complete. So for example, let's start with the row that says after step one. And just to save myself from having to go back and forth too much, I wrote down that sphere one and sphere two are touching together in step one. So what we're going to do, because sphere one and two are touching, is we're going to average the charge on sphere one with the charge on sphere two. And so 
let's just do that on a new page. The charge on sphere one is plus four microcoulombs. And the charge on sphere two is minus two microcoulombs. So we're just adding positive four and minus two, and then we're dividing by two in order to average them together. When we do this, we get positive one microcoulombs. So we can go back and we can just fill in after step one is done, sphere one and sphere two both have a charge of positive one microcoulombs. Now sphere three wasn't involved in step one at all, so sphere three just has the same charge that it started with, which is negative four microcoulombs. Now let's have a look at the next row which shows us what's going on after step two. So in step two, sphere two and sphere three are touching together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna average together the numbers from the previous row. So we're not going back up to the row that says initial charge. Instead, we're gonna average together the ones that I have underlined. So again, let's do that on a new slide. So we have to average together positive one microcoulomb and negative four microcoulombs. Divide by two so that we're actually averaging. And we get an answer of negative 1.5 microcoulombs. So now sphere two has a charge of negative 1.5 microcoulombs, and sphere three also has a charge of negative 1.5 microcoulombs. But since sphere one wasn't involved in step two, we just carry down its charge. So its charge is still the same as it was in the previous row, which is positive one. And now finally, we're gonna do step three. Step three involves sphere one and sphere three being averaged together. So again, make sure you look just at the row above the one that you're currently working on. So we're gonna average sphere one's current charge, which is positive one microcoulomb together with sphere three's current charge, which is negative 1.5 microcoulombs. And that gives negative 0 0.25 microcoulombs. So we've got negative 0 0.25 microcoulombs for both sphere one and sphere three. And for sphere two, because it wasn't involved, we're just gonna carry down the number that was written above. And now we should have enough information to answer the question. So if we just go back for a second, what were we being asked for? We were being asked for the final charge on sphere one. And so the final charge on sphere one, we look at the last row in the table in the column associated with sphere one. So we have negative 0.25 microcoulombs. Just a note, sometimes when we're doing questions in this unit, we leave negatives off of charges in lesson four. That's not the case. So you'll notice everywhere that I was doing math, if I had a negative charge, I did include the negative in my math. And that's the end of lesson four.